Welcome to the Ops Experts Club with Aaron, Taryn, and Savannah. This podcast will take you behind the scenes of some of the finer details of multi-million dollar companies. These ops experts have dealt with operations for scaling companies and well-established businesses with anywhere from small to large teams. If you've ever been deep into the details of a major company, then you know how much it takes, and these conversations are just for you. Welcome to the Ops Experts Club podcast. Well, I guess we should welcome everybody. The first question is, is, I guess if people don't know us by now, it would be good introduction. So Savannah, who are you? What do you do and where do you come from? My name is Savannah and I work on the Colab team in, in operations, as all of us do. I focus more on the customer experience side of things. So I like to help customers, will help clients get their customers in a more smooth workflow, customer journey. They have a place to go. They know where to go to contact your company if they need help with something. So mostly do like Zendesk kind of rollouts, helping a lot in Gmail, that kind of thing. But I'm in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming. So we get to work remote. There's not also a lot of businesses in person out here to do this kind of thing. So thankful yeah. we live in the future. How about yeah. you, Ben? Well, my name is Ben. I was going to say, it's curious to me before we get on to me, how many clients that we bring in that really don't have like a solid support system. Like how many times we've rolled out Zendesk, we're like, how have you, like you just emailing people? <laughs> yeah, that's like the most, yeah. Like everyone that we roll into and they're, you know, kind of a decent sized company and they just have a chunk of people all sharing one Gmail or Outlook or whatever. They're sharing one email address and trying to make sure that they don't step on each other's toes. And so that ends up being kind of square one where it's like, man, like you guys don't even know who answered what last, like, let's fix that because that is a recipe for disaster. So yeah, Yeah, it's super cool being able to see people. And especially when you see clients and they're like, oh my gosh, it's so much easier than we've ever done that. Yes. Yeah. Once Zendesk is like off and running, that's my favorite is seeing people's reaction to being like, oh my gosh, it's so much easier than I thought it would be. And it's like, yeah, it doesn't have to be crazy complicated. You don't have to like... You don't have to step in, you know, six years into the future to to just get simple an- emails answered. So, yeah. Well, yeah, my name is Ben. If nobody has met me, I, yeah, I'm a solutions tech. I'm primarily operations. I'll actually, a lot of what I'm doing these days is, is helping build out org structure with a lot of our clients. So job descriptions, delegate, elevates some of our operations teams and departments and a lot of these other clients there, a lot of them don't even have job descriptions for the people that are around. It's just hire as fast as you can and then find somewhere to stick them and give them something to do. But circling back around to actually give these people job descriptions or like, this is your job, not like these other 900 things that you're just doing because you don't know what else to do. You should just do these like few <laughs> certain things. So that's been, that's been fun. That's a lot of what we're doing. I do a lot of tech with Taryn, of course, so a lot of automations with clients just to make make stuff run a little more efficiently and yeah my background i'm up here in washington state good old what is what is our state the evergreen state is that evergreen state not not so much where you're at though huh you're in the yeah it's funny like we we are people go there's a desert in washington yeah i live in the desert and it's very desert light here but yeah what's your background before collab What, what did you come out of Actually, customer service. So when people talk to me about like what training I had to lead up to this, like it wasn't fancy college or anything. Like it was just, I have worked so much customer service from the time that I was old enough to work. Like the day that I was old enough to work, I went and got hired. Actually, actually, fun fact, I got hired before I was old enough to work because I didn't know. I thought the legal age to get a job was 15. And so I went and got a job at 15 and went through the whole thing, went through three interviews. They hired me and then looked at my birth date. And he was like, wait, you're only 15. And I'm like, yes, I just turned 15. And he's like, dude, we cannot hire you. So, so fun fact, I got hired before I was legally uh, able to, to do that. But so, yeah, I worked, gosh, I worked Target. I worked Walmart. I worked little mom and pop art supply, mom and pop frame shops. Those are super, those are that like framing is like, I love framing so much. (laughs) I suck at it really bad because I'm not a great craftsperson, but really fun. So a lot of like handholding all levels of customer service. And then the most recent thing that I did before I started working here is I actually worked for a nonprofit. 
And that was my first like real like admin job. And that was the first time that I actually like realized how tech savvy I am in all my customer service jobs. Like I always ended up being the person that would like help fix the systems when they were down and like help organize teams and that kind of thing. But, but being the administrative assistant, I actually had to like research what software we could use to make the organization more successful and stuff. And that, and that just really took off for me and like showed me what I was actually capable of. But you still go in the nonprofit? Yes, the nonprofit is still running. I obviously am no longer there because they're yeah. based in Washington State and I moved away. But yeah, it's called Bainbridge Arts and Crafts. It's on Bainbridge Island. And they started back in 1948. And that's when Bainbridge Island was like, you could not get there. Like you had to have like a little dinghy boat to get there from Seattle and stuff. Like it was like legit. And it was this group of ladies that were just like, we want to make an arts group. Like arts are important. And we want, and so people were like taking boats to each other to like keep this thing going. And it started out with like cute, like doilies and like wood crafts, but now it's thriving. They have art shows every month. And so I got to help organize art shows and organize meetings where we would, you know, decide like the theme of different programs that we were doing and art courses and it was a really cool opportunity to get to work there. Nonprofits will burn you out fast, yeah. but but it's it's cool to get to do something like that for your community. And you learn so fast because you don't have a choice. So it was like a great boot camp before doing this. That's right. That's cool. Yeah. And I actually didn't know your background at all. So it's actually really interesting to hear. Yeah, that's basically most of it just being in the trenches with other customer service people. So I, I like to think of myself as like I'm trying to heal customer service teams from like PTSD because it can be awful and it doesn't necessarily have to be if the company that is employing you like helps set you up for success. Yeah. But but yeah, working working at Walmart Electronics at, at Christmas season, the year that the, <laughs> the all of the augmented reality like motion based things came wow. out at the same time. Oh, that was a Christmas. That was oh, Christmas. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. I would, that'd be so tough. You know, Walmart or Black Friday. Man, I remember the Black Friday craziness. I still remember a Black Friday when I was a kid. We went to get a Razor scooter. Like when Razor scooters first came out, it was hilarious because I'd always go like Black Friday shopping with my parents and they were like, go run and get it for your cousins. And then I opened it up on Christmas Day and it was for me. <laughs> it had me running and getting my own presents <laughs> on Black Friday. That's a fun one. But yeah, but I guess my background, I come from coffee, of course. Same with me. Like all of my experiences just learned from the trenches, basically, just from years. My, my last job, I was there for almost, gosh, almost 11 years, a little over 11 years. But everything was learned. I could have gone to university um, or I could have just worked at where I worked. And that's the path I took. And it was basically going to university, which, but instead of having to pay for it, I got paid and I didn't come out with student debt. <laughs> yeah. That's the sucky part for me. I still got the student debt. So good for you for, for learning all the, all the tools without doing the student debt. Yeah, it was, it wasn't like an active choice at the time. It was like, I just need money. Cause I had like moved out. I was like, I gotta make money. I can't go to school. I know I need money. So I'll just work at this coffee shop. And then I just never left. <laughs> But it's so interesting, like seeing now, like the trouble that so many people are in because they did go to university and rack up that debt, which again, I'm, I get to be in both camps, but yeah. I, to be fair, I didn't go to university and that's part of the problem is that I went to a private art school and those are more expensive. So yay. But, but the fact that you, you went through this instead and you got to learn every single facet of how to run this business because of getting to vote your whole devote your whole time into it and of course you want to raise get raised up and everything and so you teach yourself more you learn more and then also because of your perspective of seeing what sucks about these businesses it lets you think about okay well how would I do this differently so now we get to be in this position where we have been through it we have seen it all and then so we know from an outsider perspective what another business could come in and do to make it better yep yeah being in the industry for 11 years you see a lot of just what does not work what does work like i've i've seen in the coffee industry i've seen just about every mistake you can make when running and starting a coffee company that i'm like i don't want to do that <laughs> i'd never i'd rather be a consultant but you learn a lot about people along the way in my time there I had to have hired and trained you know over when I left, we had about 150 employees, but I mean, before that, I probably have, have gone through like 500 employees of training, interviewing, you know, learning how people act, 
you know, promoting managers, all that sort of stuff. So bringing that into this online world is, is it's been great for me since, because people are people, they don't change, doesn't matter what industry and they're always the same. So it's been fun to bring that fun fact about me when I left was getting ready to leave that company. I actually went back to school to, to finish out my, my bachelor's and about halfway through, I was like, I can't do this anymore. It was like going back to third grade and sitting through a third grade math class. I was like, this is agonizing. I'm like, I'm going over stuff that I learned like four years ago. I cannot do this. So like yeah, to try yeah. and go back for a piece of paper and sit through like, you're like, oh my gosh, you guys don't know this. Like I learned this three years ago and this is how I got through it. It was, it was agonizing. So I stopped doing that. And then I came to look at Phil MT. Well, and you know, not knocking because there's a lot of careers that do like absolutely require that like extra level of training and I'm not computing that or anything but like that is an expensive piece of paper yes so, depending on what you're going to it for like you know you best be sure that it's gonna that it's gonna pay itself off later and absolutely I made it halfway through my degree also and then was just like this is not working out this is not gonna work out for me nope and <laughs> And kind of the same thing, like I've always enjoyed being on the computer. And so a lot of what art school ended up being because of what the arts are now is being on the computer. Like a lot of it is graphic design mm -hmm. and spending time in Adobe. And I've been doing that since I got a copy of Photoshop when I was 13. Because that was when, you know, everyone had like, was it LimeWire? Oh, yeah. <laughs> build our computer. Once so we many albums downloaded it. So, yeah, so I had I had pho uh, Adobe Photoshop Elements 7. But anyway, so I already knew how to like do like digital painting and everything. And that was what like like my second year into art school that was we like shifted really hard into that. And I was like, I'm paying sixteen thousand dollars a year to do stuff that I've already been doing since I was 13 years old. So. Yeah, it's it. tough. It's tough. But I mean, it, I, I totally get it. Like especially like what I was doing as a BA in, in business. Like it makes complete sense if you're 19. Like I just graduated high school. I ran the school store and I want to get into business. Great. Those are for you. If you're so much sense to me, 34, if you've been running a company for the last five years, you're like, well, why am I sitting through this? Yeah. Yeah. You've seen it. You've seen it in real time. Like you've seen it played out and you don't need that piece of paper to tell you that you know that because you've been doing it. So. Yep. Which I feel like great segue is in how most of our Ops Experts Club members, they come in, the Kimberleys, the Jesses, all of them come in. They've got like this huge wealth of real world experience. I don't know their backgrounds, of course, but like you can see when they come in, they're like, oh, yeah, I've, I've been in the trenches for a while now. I know how this game works. I've done this, this, this. I know all of these things just because. You end up working in a company with a visionary who's like, let's go, we're making money, we're, we're selling a product. And you're like, all right, I'm going to figure it out as I go. <laughs> yeah, lots of, lots of Googling, but you know, so I guess you're still, you're still getting an education. It's just yeah. in a much informal. Yeah, it's informal and you're getting paid for it. That's the best thing. You're getting paid to get educated versus the other way around. That's my favorite way to get educated about something. So on that note, Savannah, what would you say coming into the collab team and working with the collab team, what's, what's one of the, the biggest hurdles that you've had to jump over in the learning process, you know, of what operations is with our clients? Is there like one of those big things where like, holy crap, I can't believe I figured that out. I think just it's, it's so funny. Like it's so, so much mind over matter. Like, I think it's just getting over the hurdle of like, recognizing that you can do it like that you don't that you don't have to have that degree and that the, so the information is probably out there and you might have to tinker with it for a little bit and so I guess that's that's a little bit of the fear is that you're working on someone else's business and so you obviously don't want to mess it up so like figuring out how to make like little safe bubbles for you to like experiment and practice in is is kind of important but just knowing that like there's a way to do almost everything and so you just have to figure out what that way is and so so coming into a collab team i started out actually just helping with customer service like i just was i was quickly onboarded onto zendesk because they were having a challenge and they needed extra support so i just came in and was like answering tickets as much as i could and learned more pieces about automations and stuff as i was doing it and then just like 
the more that was required, the more it was just like, well, I got to figure out how to do this. I'm going to Google it and watch a bunch of YouTube videos. And then so just learning like, holy crap, I can do this. Like, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And I have to Google it and watch it a few times and then try. And then bam. It really is funny how much of a confidence booster YouTube is. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I can do anything. I could, I could literally do anything. Like we're looking up. Don't, don't, don't do like plumbing and electricity electricity but we but we have i think the biggest hurdle is just getting out of your own way for sure yeah. yeah i would agree with that that probably is the same for me coming from my background just because it was such a a weird shift to go from brick and mortar where you're like i have a physical product that I, and i i say this all the time but it was so the biggest hurdle for me was just trying to wrap my brain around like the shift of like i sell a physical product i see the people face to face that i'm selling it to I can count how many of those products go out because they all went through my hands to this like shift to this online world where it's like everything is completely digital. There is no physical product going out. There's, you know, you're barely even seeing your customers. And like, I remember when I first talked to Aaron, like some of my first few weeks in, he's like, how's it going? I was like, I don't understand what you guys do. I don't, it is, this doesn't make any sense to me. Everybody's talking about like courses and logins and these tagging systems. I'm like, what is this weird world? But it was like, well, I guess I'll figure it out. And so along the way, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can figure this out. Oh, I can figure this out. I can do this. When you and me, you and me both came on in 2020, right? Yeah, I was October of 2020. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so that was when, you know, the world shut down. And so like everything went digital. And so I feel like that made it even more confusing because we had to move so fast where it was like, you don't have time to think about why. You're like, you just got to do it. Like, you've got to figure it out. And I started in, I think, February of 2020. So it was just before everything shut down. And then, you know, collab team was needed by everybody because everybody, any online entrepreneur was suddenly seeing like such an huge increase in their business that they didn't have time to think about operations. They just had to, I guess, same as us. They just had to do, they didn't have time to think about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's right around when, cause didn't Pedro Deo, what did they start working with, with Sage? Cause I know Sage really blew up right around then too, on their whole Zoom, the way that they even ran Zoom conferences. It was right around that same year, early 2021, maybe. It was actually, I think it was June of 2020. Because collab, we had to figure out how to do the online conference because that was when they were going to have, was it a conference or was it, I think that was when they started Crush It With Challenges. Mm. And so it was their big old launch of Crush It With Challenges when they were talking about it from the stage. Yeah, that was crazy too. Like everyone just had to completely pivot what they do and figure out how to exist online instead. Which is funny because like going through it, which I mean, it, you, you can say it's a metaphor for operations in general, but going through it, you're like, this sucks. This sucks. Oh my gosh, this sucks. But when you get through it, you come out the back and you're like, oh, this actually is like a way more profitable way of doing things. Why rent out an entire hotel and rent out ballrooms and have all this overhead when we could just like hire a small company to run a Zoom room for us? Yeah. And, and then your overhead is just, mixed and you're like, wow, this is way more profitable. It's way easier. I can and reach more people. Exactly. That's all I was going to say. It was just that you're reaching so many people and they're people that maybe otherwise couldn't afford, they couldn't afford your product beforehand. And so now you can like offer things at a much wider set of price points too, which is, which is so unique because usually it's just, you know, here's a service. So here's the price for it. And now it's like, okay, well, like how many levels of service do you want? And it's just so interesting to see this marketplace kind of like you said like it's not physical products so it's just so weird to just watch things unfold it's just crazy it's just crazy and anybody anywhere in the world can now buy your product i always say like i don't know how i could ever do like if i was a business owner it would be really hard to be like yeah i'm gonna stick with brick and mortar especially like from my background coming into where i am now i'm like why would I go brick and mortar? I could reach a thousand people with no overhead to reach that same amount of people in like a brick and mortar location for a product X that I'm selling. There's so much work and money that goes into that just to make the same revenue where over here you're, you know, you're grossing like a 60, 70% profit. And over here you're like, really hope I make 11% profit off of this product. Yeah. It's, 
And God bless them. I'm glad there's still brick and mortar out there because I love going to a coffee shop. <laughs> But I'm just like, like I live in a little town and so we have like our little, our little main street and stuff where we have the little shops where people are still just doing their best. Mm -hmm. And, and I do, there is just something that you can't compare to just getting to like walk through and go through a little shop and get a cup of coffee. And that is really nice. But, but I'm the same way where, especially coming from customer service background where like you kind of see the worst in people when they're shopping. So part of me is just like, burn all the brick and mortar to the ground. Like everyone, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, but I kind of like shopping in person sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, a, it's nice to see things like and touch them and not wait till you get it shipped to you. And then you hold it and you're like, oh, this isn't what I wanted at all. I get to pay return shipping. So what a weird time. It is a very weird time. I don't like doing it, but as long as somebody else likes running a brick and mortar, that's great. <laughs> yeah. there, there's, you know, there's something for everyone. So there's people out there that, that want that. I even just think about like rent though, like rent on anything is so expensive now that I'm like, I just, I just Yeah, don't. brick and mortar has got to be a passion. And I will say one of, one of the great things about brick and mortar too, is that you do get to see your customers face to face. You do get like the, like, you know, the people you don't like, but in the coffee industry, like there was, I would say 80% of the people when I was working back in the day, you know, I'd be managing a location and every morning I knew like almost every person came through and it was always like, how's it going? So there's that interaction of like getting to be able to actually interact with real people, having a good time, see smiles on faces that you definitely can't get in this online space. So there is that aspect of it that I think will brick and mortar will never leave just because people like interacting with people and you can only do zoom or digital for so long where you're like, I need to see a real person. Yeah. Yeah. It lets, it lets workaholics like us pretend we have friends, huh? That's true. It is also great for the introvert. Cause you're like, I don't have to see anybody. I can just sit in my, in my desk in my room all day long. That has been, yeah. And it's been like the blessing and the curse of this because I have been forced to be out in the public space for my whole life and I am extremely introverted. And so my therapist, I guess I, it's funny to say that out loud, but my therapist has been like, <laughs> so are you in like any social groups or anything <laughs> I'm Zoom all day? And I'm like, I'm just on Zoom all day. Like I'm living my best life. And he's like, yeah, I think you should figure out how to get outside. You don't have to work outside. I'm like, is that a nice way of saying, so do you have like any friends or? Yeah. <laughs> like my friends, my friends. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, that's great. Uh, well, so what's one big win you've had lately in the past, I don't know, months, two months, six months, something that's really stuck out, would you say, either with a client or the collab team? I think my favorite thing in the collab team that's been kind of new for me, I've like managed teams on a small scale in the past, but. I'm getting a lot of opportunity to train people within the collab team right now and like help them elevate, which is again, kind of like one of those, like get out of your own way things, mm -hmm. because I would never think of myself as qualified to, to train other ops people and help them, you know, do more and everything. So, so I've been able to kind of take a backseat on a lot of things because I've been training other team to do what I do. And then I can just kind of like, you know, survey and and make sure that everything's going well so delegate that's elevate delegate and elevate <laughs> so i've been, been getting to do a lot of that which is which is pretty new for me all right savannah well this has been fun thanks everybody for watching now or in the future i guess we'll catch them all next week all right thanks for kicking us off thank you for tuning in to the ops experts club podcast new episodes available every week on spotify itunes and everywhere you listen to podcasts if you're curious about how some of the biggest names in entrepreneurship have scaled their businesses to the next level, check out some of our best content on this topic by going to foundationsatscale.com. You can find the link in our bio and do your part to improve as an ops expert. <laughs>